Well, welcome to London, UK of us all. I hope you all made it here well and you're all in good form. And if you didn't over imbibe last night at the chairman's reception, I certainly did myself, so there we are. Um, London is becoming a very exciting place. I normally don't get invited to anything in London. All the stakeholders, I think is the technical term for them, try to keep us well out of the picture. Well, I was recently invited to one because they were discussing how well UKIP were doing in London and what effect we were going to have in the local elections. They were very worried. We had um, David Lammy and Mr. No Steve Norris, a former candidate for Mayor of London for the Conservatives, and it was hosted by my namesake, Joe Coburn, uh, who's uh, um, Andrew Neal's sidekick on the, the politics program. Um, they listened as I exclaimed that we're not just after Conservative votes, that UKIP in London are after the Labour votes, and we're doing very well getting them. I don't know how many of you saw, but our Lawrence Webb got 39% in Havering and took the seat from the, under the noses of the Labour Party and upset the Conservatives greatly. And last time, he got 6% there. So we're talking about a 33% swing. Now, if this is repeated across London in the elections, it's going to be very exciting indeed for the other parties as well as ourselves. <laughs> Our Bert Bedwell got 19%, 19% in Barking and Dagenham. Now, that's not the leafy parts of Kensington, Chelsea, I can tell you. That's gritty Labour territory in East London. And if we can do 19%, nearly 20% in Barking and Dagenham, taking working class votes, we are going to do extremely well come the local London election. We've also had 15 councillors come over from various parties, Labour and Conservative. So London's shaping up very, very well indeed. More shocking than anything else, Gawain woke me up one morning to tell me that Paddy Power, the bookmaker, uh, had me at number 11 for the next Mayor of London after Boris Johnson. I, could, I thought he'd been drinking, I thought he'd been out having a party or something, I couldn't quite believe it. But there it was, on 33 to one, uh, 33, yeah, 33 to one. So it's not bad odds, so I suggest you all get down the bookies and put your money on it. <laughs> Best of all, I was ahead of um, Lord Sugar, Ken Livingston, and Chaka Umana. So, <laughs> UKIP are definitely going somewhere in, Lo in London. Always remember, polls may be wrong, but bookies seldom are, because they've got money on it. Right, I'm gonna hand over to Geoffrey Tipford, and I'm sure you'll go give him a warm welcome. Jeffrey Tipford, our life president. Well, good morning, conference, and happy anniversary to you all. It's lovely to be back in the, the London scene again. I think this is our powerhouse, and it's where we really want to do well in the future because I think everything starts in London, I'm afraid to say, but it will spread to the outlying districts. So, the United Kingdom Independence Party is 20 years old. Seems a very, very long time to me. But I want to take you back 40 years. I don't know whether, or how many of you remember when the British Prime Minister, Ted Heath, supported by politicians of all the other parties, signed the Treaty of Rome, and therefore placed this country under the power of foreign countries and politicians. This, I think, could have been called an act of treason. In fact, it was challenged on those terms in the courts in different parts of the country. But every court threw out the case, no doubt prompted by a government in Westminster. But those people that signed the treaty, and the politicians over here, 
they knew that it was not a common market that we were signing up to. That in fact, we were going to be part of an organization to form a single country called Europe. National countries and identities were to go. Do you know, from that moment on, our relationship with the other countries in Europe and our attitude towards the people over there changed completely. And it's ironic that the one thing that we were supposed to have joined up for was trade swung the other way round. Whereas we had a credit balance in, in trade with Europe, it turned at that stage into a deficit and it has never altered since then. But as the years passed, it became evident to many that what was occurring when the legislation and directives started moving from the bounds of trade, they started to affect every aspect of our life. So it wasn't only trade and industry that was being controlled. Suddenly the European Union, the foreign politicians and the Politburo of a commission started to influence in this country finance, education, law and order, farming, fishing and the environment and I'm sure you could carry on with many more names. We are heading for a supranational state if we don't do something about it. It took 20 years of, before that deception was challenged when a group of British voters came together to form a new political party which eventually was called UKIP. We are indebted to those people and they will be honoured during this conference. It's not an easy pass for them, but one that was absolutely vital. They had to reverse the situation and restore self-government to this country. Well, we've now grown in force, which has had to be recognized because we are regularly running third in the opinion polls. And now we're in a position to influence elections at all levels and policies of the government, since some of them have chosen to take UKIP's policies under their own name. But one issue that must be faced is membership of the European Union. For this country will never flourish again until we are free to control our own destiny. This also applies. <laughs> this also applies to membership of the European Courts of Justice. UKIP can now play a major part in decisions. We have a strong presence in the European Union Parliament and that is going to be strengthened enormously next year. I'm really looking forward to that. And I feel that the extra people that we get into that Parliament will also influence the press over here that we are not Johnny Go Lightly's. We're never going to implode on ourselves. We are going to get stronger and stronger until eventually we will form a government in this country. <laughs> Another item in our favor is the appalling government we have in at the moment. In my opinion, it's the worst that we've had for decades. We have a weak prime minister, unable to lead because of his ties with an opposition party, it puts him in a terrible position. He cannot make decisions. Well, when he does make decisions, invariably they are U-turns, aren't they? He has to reverse them because he obviously hasn't cleared it with Le Clegg and they fall at the first hurdle. And yet for some unknown reason, he plays along with the Lib Dems' stupid ideas. He gave them the opportunity to have a referendum on how we vote. He almost encouraged them to change the House of Lords. And he allows Clegg to make statements like the 
meals for schools and other financial increases that come to the people of this country. He will not acknowledge how ser serious the problem of immigration is. So now our social services are under enormous strain and the government has tinkered with National Health Service, education, social services, only to see the situations there get even more muddled. The government is persisting in promoting HS2, something which I attacked last year. And it's also trying to get wind farms, all this to the detriment of everybody and a cost to us all. Why hasn't this government taken on a program of producing nuclear power themselves? Why are we waiting for foreign companies to do the running? This is something which would help us enormously, make us self-sufficient instead of relying across pipelines across Europe, which can be switched off at any moment. And also, we could then control our own costs. So we're left with one thing. It's a simple message. Tell the voters of this country to give UKIP a vote and we promise to press any government on their policies until right decisions are being made to us and to the people. And the biggest one of all, we're still waiting, Mr. Cameron, Mr. Miliband, and anybody else who might be interested. We're looking for a referendum on Europe now. And it won't be until we have that freedom to choose and control ourselves that world trading, future investment into this country will start to flow. That is our aim, and that is the way we will succeed. So I'm saying well done to UKIP workers. You deserve success. Now, ladies and gentlemen, sit back and enjoy a great conference. Thank you.